Hey folks, back in here in the 2005 Dodge Ram, and you can see there we just crossed 300,000 miles. Um, and I did a blow by test on the motor. Unfortunately, um, the numbers are not good, uh, so we're looking like it's rebuild time. Um, that's how Cummins measures the uh, the wear of an engine. They don't do it by compression; they do it by uh, cylinder blow by and a manometer, which is basically how far the uh, crankcase pressure can lift a column of water and they have numbers for a good engine for an engine like midlife and then for an engine that's overdue for a rebuild and my numbers were way past overdue for a rebuild so I'm gonna fire it up now and just show you what I was talking about with the blow-by so you can see it's puffing out of there pretty good So we're a couple hours down the road here, probably closer to three. I got the uh, turbo and the uh, exhaust manifold off. Got all the um, fuel lines off, so now I need to work on getting the tubes out. Um, but I'm probably going to pull the uh, valve cover. Alright, so I'm getting ready to pull the head here. Um, still got to get the head bolts out. But I got the rocker box off, valve cover off, um, intake horn, fuel lines, got the turbo off on that side, exhaust manifold, um, then basically everything on the front of the accessory drive that uh, hooks up to the head, all the wiring and uh, the alternator. Alright, so I got this thing all pulled apart uh, last night, I got the head off it, and uh, I can still see cross hatch on cylinders two through six, but number one have obvious signs of a broken piston ring there. And I can barely feel that with my finger, so hopefully the hone will get it out. But I'm going to continue with the disassembly on the bottom end now. All right, so I got both main um, engine mounts loosened up there. And uh, just the main, the one main bolt that goes through and it uh, goes across the frame on each side. And uh, it's loosened and it allows the motor to slip up out of the mount a little bit, the frame mount. And then I have a 4x4 four four jacking up the um, air compressor mount or the uh, AC compressor mount there. Already got most of the pan bolts out. And I got the motor jacked up a couple inches off of that cross frame. Uh, so hopefully that'll be enough to uh, allow me to slip the pan out. And then when I'm done, I'll be able to just kind of lower the motor back down. Alright, so I got the oil pan dropped out. You can see I had to jack it up off of that uh, cross member quite a bit. A little more than I'm comfortable with, but I'm going to drop the engine back down onto the mounts now because it's kind of turned a little bit. Oh, that was a little fast. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look under here. All right, got the oil pan dropped out here. Got the engine dropped back onto the mounts. And uh, the next step is I'm gonna have to get that pickup tube out of the way and then that uh, big cross brace.
right, so yesterday I got the cylinders honed out. I'm sorry I didn't show that, but it's pretty simple. It's just uh, one of the bottle brush uh, hones you put on the drill and just run it up and down there. Only thing is, um, I don't know if you can see it in here, but yeah, that little guy right down there is an oiler. So you have to be careful not to hit that. And you want to put uh, something down in there to keep debris from going on the crank. And also I had um, all these holes taped up because you want to keep stuff from going uh, uh, coming through the oil journals. All right, guys. So when I was trying to do the bearing roll in um, in the crankcase, I have a Pixel 2 XL, and it's a phone that you get just for the camera. Unfortunately, the camera started freezing and doing all kinds of stuff. Um, so I ended up having to get a new phone under warranty. So I couldn't show the bearing roll-in procedure, but I'm going to show um, a link up here in the video. Keep your eye out for it because uh, there's a bearing roll-in video of a guy that did one on a Cummins um, tractor. And that's exactly the procedure I use. I actually learned how to do it from his video. So I'm going to put a link up here. And uh, sorry I couldn't show it in my video due to the, um, the phone uh, messing up. So right now I'm rolling in uh, new bearings and I've got all but the last one done. This is right under the number one cylinder. All the other bearings were good, but... All right, one other thing that I couldn't show due to my phone freaking out and um, the camera app crashing all the time was the, f the honing process. So I got the uh, cylinder head off um, and got everything removed from the, the bottom end of the motor. Before you put new bearings in, um, you want to do the honing. You don't want to do the honing after you put the new bearings in because obviously you don't want to do anything to damage the new bearings. And also, um, there's oilers down in the bottom of the, um, the bore that you need to be careful of that you don't hit with a hone. You either need to remove them or be really careful that you don't hit them with a hone. And I know people are saying, well, you have to go all the way down, um, but the, the pistons don't travel all the way to the bottom of the bore so you can get close enough to the bottom of the bore without taking those oilers out in my experience you just have to be really careful not to hit them some of them some years are plastic i'm not sure which ones are uh, but mine were metal so what i did was i just put some tin foil down in the bottom to cover up the uh, the crank journals uh, to keep the debris uh, from falling down in there and then put some tape on the top of the um, cylinder head. So that is a flex hone. And 240 grit, 4 inch flex hone, which is what they recommended. Um, you have to be pretty aggressive about moving it up and down. Because uh, you want to get, you know, a 30, greater than 30 degree uh, cross hatch on it. Which will help the, uh, the pistons ring seat. And the most difficult part about this is hitting the number six cylinder because it wants to bend. You can see I kind of bend up, bent up my uh, flex hone shaft quite a bit hitting that one. So if you, I was using um, just a regular drill over there. But if you have um, one of those like right angle drills that has a real um, kind of a low profile, it would be easier. You could probably cut this off and get it down in there a lot easier than uh, what I did. Okay folks, so I finally got the motor put back together um, and you can tell by my driveway my truck's in a different spot now. So I've uh, I got almost 430 miles on it um, after the rebuild and I'm coming up on the first oil change I'm going to do uh, just past 500 miles. Um, but I just wanted to give you an update on the, uh, the blow-by here. Uh, so when I first did the rebuild I was getting a lot of blow by and uh, exhaust um, exhaust fumes uh, you could smell it coming through the oil breather cap and uh, now that's fixed the reason obviously was the number one uh, broken um, uh, piston ring on the number one cylinder there so I'm gonna go out and show you that it's gonna be a little loud but
there's still vapor coming out of it, which is normal, uh, but it doesn't have that uh, choo-choo train thing going on like it did before from the number one cylinder uh, shooting exhaust into the crankcase. And I can tell you it smells a lot different than it did before. Uh, if you come to a stoplight in this thing before I did the, um, the overhaul, the uh, exhaust coming out of the bottom uh, crankcase vent would almost choke you inside the, uh, the cab there. Now it doesn't smell like exhaust at all in the crankcase. So all in all, I think um, pretty successful uh, in-frame overhaul. Haven't had any issues with the truck since I got it going again, um, except for uh, cold starts. I'm running a 12 valve tune, so cold starts are a little bit difficult. Um, and one thing that uh, I noticed was the overhaul kit, the uh, the gaskets for the intake air heater grid are not metallic, so I actually had to add a little, um, um, had to add a ground wire to that. And I'll show you that here in a second. So for whatever reasons, I guess when I put it back together, none of the uh, studs are actually making contact with the grid heater to give it a good ground. So I ended up just making a ground wire here and hopefully that'll fix the problem. But yeah, all in all, pretty successful. Um, I did get my uh, exhaust brake in there. So that's gonna be the next step is getting that um, reactivated in the ECM and uh, doing the tuning for that. That's going to be a future video coming up here pretty soon because I got to get the onboard air system in to make that work. But anyway, that is a in-frame overhaul for a Cummins 5.9. This is a 2005. So hopefully this uh, will help you guys. Um, if it did, please uh, leave me some comments. If you have any questions, uh, shoot some comments in there. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff.